Hi everyone, this is Navya here online for my fourth live session. Um, I've come online to interact with all of you who are watching. This is basically a medium for us to connect with our clients and um, you know also to connect with those of you who are still a little bit on the fence about migrating to New Zealand, just to perhaps give you that little push that you need to um, take that leap forward and um, you know eventually of course reap the benefits out of it. Um, so before I begin my session, this is my license card, and this basically enables me to provide immigration advice for New Zealand. You can also verify it from the Immigration Advisor Authority's website by just searching for my name in the register of licensed immigration advisors. That would pretty much give you all the details, um, you know, about my uh, my contact details as well as details around my license and its validity. So uh, for those of you who aren't aware. All the immigration advisors are bound by a stringent code of conduct, and that code of conduct requires us to display our license to all of our clients before we actually, you know, provide immigration advice of any sort. So let me just check with my team if I'm live. Yes, I am. Great. All right then. So yeah, right now we are basically um, in the middle of uh, you know one of our most crucial intakes for student visa applications, which is basically the January, February, March intake. That's a time period when a lot of the colleges and universities are starting with um, you know a lot of their courses. So for um, all of our clients, all of the AJVians as we've started calling them now, um, people who've lodged their student visa applications through us, uh, this is just me coming on the live session and reassuring all of you that um, you know we will definitely get an outcome in time uh, for your course so don't fret don't panic stay in touch with your visa officers we have been um, on a constant in constant touch with immigration New Zealand as well they are being very helpful they are paying heed to our requests as well so um, you know we'll definitely try our best to get an outcome in time for you um, we are also going to be in touch with the colleges and the universities. So, um, you know, in case there's you're, you're really short on time and you haven't got, a, you know, your e-visa yet, we will try and get an extension from the college or the university as well. They do tend to give about a week's extension. So even if you do miss your orientation, you may still, uh, you know, hopefully make it in time for your course. So, um, yeah, and this is also um, certain good news for uh, people, you know, who, ha who have lodged their student visa applications that the time frame for the assessment of student visa applications has also come down. Um, up until some time back, it was about 90% uh, of the applications were being approved in around 84 days, but that has come down to about 61 days now. So that's that's great. That just shows that the um, you know Department of Immigration is also putting their best foot forward to um, you know give us outcomes in a timely manner. So yeah. And uh, basically, for those of you who aren't uh, yet working with us, but, um, <clears throat> you know, would like to travel to New Zealand, um, I would encourage you to get in, uh, get in touch with us now, especially if you're interested in going to New Zealand for the July intake, which is the next big intake, or even for the April, May, June intake. Um, just, you know, get in touch with us and we will guide you on the best way forward. Um, for a lot of you who aren't really aware about, you know, what our company deals with, um, we're basically an immigration consultancy. And, um, you know, for those of you uh, who are not directly eligible for residence, which can actually be a little bit tricky, um, you know, the requirements can be a little difficult to meet. Uh, what the pathway that we do suggest to all of you is to go for the study plus settle pathway um, that basically involves you, um, you know, getting in touch with us, with our counselors. They will look at your profile, um, you know, tell you what particular course from which university would best suit your profile, depending on your budget as well. And something that's, of course, relevant to your background or to your you know, prior experience. And, um, you know, you can go into New Zealand almost immediately, even in the next month, if your funds are ready and, um, you know, start your life from there. Um, so, yes, you, you, can, you could pursue a course of, you know, one, one and a half years. And uh, subsequently, depending upon the level of uh, your course, you'd also be eligible for a two or a three year post study work visa. Um, this work visa is great because it's an open work visa. So uh, that basically means that, you know, you will be able to work for any employer in any location, um, you know, at uh, and um, at any position. So there aren't any restrictions to it. Um, and the great part about the post-study work visa is also the fact that it's two or three years. So it gives you ample amount of time to, you know, really 
uh, explore the job market for yourself. Um, you know, self-employment is also something that is allowed on a post-study work visa. So yes, it's a great option. Um, and of course, you know, once you do get a job on your post-study work visa, and it, if it meets the salary threshold for a resident, uh, for you know, to lodge a residence application, then um, you know you can definitely go right ahead and lodge your residence application at that point as well. And um, you know, an added benefit, of course, is that um, if you have a two or a three-year post-study work visa, you'd also be eligible for subsidized healthcare which is one of the privileges that New Zealand citizens and residents get. So, um, you know, that's that's an added bonus, of course. And um, yeah, apart from that, another great factor is that while you're pursuing your course, you can also, um, you know, you can also apply for your partnership visa. Um, so your partner can travel to New Zealand along with you. Um, you know, you can also get your children along to New Zealand so the family can be together. Um, and uh, of course, you know, it may be an initial investment in the beginning, but uh, the turnaround time for you to get residence might actually be lesser than the turnaround time for, um, you know, lodging a residence application directly. So, um, you know, those are just some of the benefits, some of the many benefits that um, the student, um, the study plus settled pathway does have to offer. So we do uh, recommend that, you know, you give that a good amount of consideration. And uh, of course, AJV here is, um, you know, we have a lot of competent uh, professionals, a lot of competent uh, study advisors who would be more than happy to sit down with you and talk to you at length about, uh, you know, the best possible options for you in New Zealand. So, yeah, let me just check if there are any questions yet. Okay, none so far. All right. Um, other than that, just, um, you know, a couple of news updates. So, um, you know, as far as other news updates go, uh, we're all aware of the spread of the coronavirus, which has caused quite a bit of a stir, um, you know, of course, all over the world. Um, so, yes, uh, even for New Zealand, there are a few travel restrictions which are being imposed. Um, you know, if you do visit the Immigration New Zealand website, it does suggest that, um, you know, foreign travelers who are transiting to, uh, through mainland China or are traveling from mainland China post 2nd Feb 2020 will be refused entry to New Zealand. So um, all of, you know, all the people who are planning to travel to New Zealand around this time, just make sure that your travel route is kind of planned in accordance to that. And, um, you know, these entry restrictions, um, the travel impositions, etc., are being uh, revised every 48 hours. So in order to get the most up to date information around this, uh, you know, it's best to visit the Immigration New Zealand website so you can get further clarity about that. And um, yeah, other than that, there is also the parent uh, category, the parent stream of the residence visa applications, which had actually been closed in October 2019. And that is set to reopen this month. So, um, you know, instructions are going to be a little bit different. Uh, there are going to be different uh, criteria for the applicants and the sponsors that the applicants and sponsors must meet. And the expression of interest will probably be, um, you know, the selection will begin somewhere around May 2020. So, um, yeah, that's the news on the immigration front. <clears throat> All right. No questions on Facebook so far. And yes, um, yeah, so before people start asking questions, uh, I would also request all of you to, uh, you know, just let us know in case you're already working with us. Um, you know, if you could also give the name of your visa officer or your study counselor, that would be great as well. And uh, people who are not yet working with us, but, you know, you're posting your query here, I do request you to uh, paste your number or your contact, um, you know, details below as well so that we can then address your questions. And of course, because at this point, you know, at such in such a forum, uh, I may not be able to extensively answer your questions. But the idea is to, you know, just kind of connect with you, touch base. And then, of course, my team members will get in touch with you and uh, answer all your queries in, you know, greater detail. <clears throat> All right, so we do seem to have some questions on YouTube. Um, let me see if my team has also pasted any messages.
All right. So we have um, Ayub Shreshta's message saying, what is the scope of early childhood education in Christchurch? Um, Ayub, thanks for your question. However, you don't seem to have pasted your number below. I would request you to do that. Um, as for your question and answering that, the scope for early childhood education is great. Uh, we do have a lot of our clients who have uh, gone for this specific course to New Zealand. Um, I've also been advised by uh, you know, my team members as a great demand for teachers in Auckland specifically. Um, and Christchurch also has a lot of openings. You could visit a lot of, there are a lot of different um, you know, career portals as well to kind of um, give you an idea of the kind of job opportunities that would be available in Christchurch or any other city perhaps. So there are websites like Seek or Careers uh, NZ. So you could check them out. Um, you could get an idea of the different you know, job opportunities available for uh, early childhood um, education teachers. And, um, you know, and of course, then one of our team members, if you do, if you are kind enough to, you know, leave your number here, one of our team members can get in touch with you and uh, tell you about the different courses that would be uh, suitable for you. Uh, because, um, uh, yeah, you know, it would be good to have some professional guidance as well, rather than just simply, you know, doing your own research. So uh, I would advise you to leave your number so that we can get in touch with you. I've also been advised by my team that, um, you know, the salary, the starting salaries for uh, early childhood teachers range from about $36,000 to $47,000, depending on the qualification. Um, so, yes, that's a good starting salary. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, a good, good, uh, good scope for early childhood education in New Zealand. So please do leave your number so that we can get in touch with you. Um, all right, so we have got um, a question from Isaac, who has also not uh, shared his number. Isaac, I would request you to share your number with us. Um, you have, however, asked what's the scope of masters in data science in Canterbury. Um, so to answer your question, um, Yes, to answer your question, there is a great scope for masters in data science. In fact, there's a good course in the University of Can Canterbury, which is, uh, you know, one of the most prestigious universities as well. Once again, we do have a lot of our clients, uh, you know, going into that field. Um, of course, uh, you know, data analysts are in high demand, uh, according to the G digital skills for a digital nation, uh, 2000, which is a 2018 New Zealand report. And, um, you know, this is because organizations are able to collect large amounts of data about their customers due to multiple devices being connected to the Internet. So, um, yeah, it's a very high paying job as well. Um, you know, so in order to kind of guide you further, we would need your contact details, however. So if you could just drop them below so our team could connect with you. Um, Sumanth has written, what is the age limit? Sumanth, I'm not sure. Um, uh, which category of visa you're talking about, uh, but there is no age limit for at least for uh, students. Um, so that's a that's a great thing. Recently, we have sent somebody as old as 50 for uh, you know masters in management course. So we do, and this is uh, this is a concern that a lot of our clients do have. That you know um, they keep asking uh, me that you know am I too old for studying? Uh, so that's really not the case. Uh, you're never too old to uh, you know learn more to educate yourself. So uh, there is no age limit for that. As for residence, yes, there is an age limit, which is about 55 years. So, um, yeah, um, I would request you to, okay, you've left your number, so that's good. We will connect with you and ask you, um, you know, what exactly your plans are. All right. Let me see if my team has said anything. Okay. Um, all right. So we have a message from Surya. Hi, I'm an AGV client. I was looking for studies, but got 5.5 in one band. So I'm planning for PR. I have nine years of experience in IT and completed my bachelor's of engineering in IT. What is the process for PR? How much time will it take to get the PR once all the requirements are met? Do we need to write IELTS general for that? Um, 
see surya has left okay you've left your number you're in touch with yunus for education but now you're interested in pr um all right surya um thanks uh, thanks for your query and uh, thank you for choosing to work with us uh, yunus is a great advisor so i'm sure she'd be able to counsel you a lot uh, you know counsel you about the uh, education side of things and for the remaining questions that you have of course you know we have a team of uh, licensed immigration advisors including me um and you know i should be able to answer your queries so um you have uh, you are demonstrating an interest in okay so firstly just to clarify uh you cannot get permanent residence directly uh there is a procedure to kind of um attain that uh which is basically that you need to be a resident for at least 2 years so uh if you don't have a residence visa you can't really get pr immediately um secondly um you have asked that all right do we need to write ielts general for that uh in order to write i the okay so starting with the requirements for a residence category so what you would probably be aiming for is a skilled migrant category residence visa so um what happens in that is that you uh, apart from meeting the 160 points which is something that you kind of attain uh, looking at various factors in your profile such as your age your previous work experience your qualification your spouse's qualification um you know once you meet the 160 points um you can uh, you uh, so that that's one factor of it and then the other requirement is that you either need to have an offer of skilled employment in new zealand or you should have completed a two years course leading up to a masters or a doctorate so um in your case i doubt you'd be you know meeting that second uh, criteria which requires you to have an offer of skilled employment or uh, requires you to have completed the two years uh, you know course so um in the event that you are meeting the 160 points yes you may be eligible for a skilled migrant category job search visa again um you know the ielts requirement for that is also a little high uh, i think it's um, at least 6.5 if i'm not mistaken with no uh, an overall score of 6.5 if i'm not mistaken we'll check that and let you know uh, but apart from that there are a lot of benefits of going for the student visa instead of a skilled migrant category job search visa um so in the event that you are eligible for a skilled migrant job search visa the processing time frame for this visa is pretty extensive so um you know it would take you approximately one to one and a half years just to kind of reach new zealand whereas if you were to go for a student visa you could probably go right in the next intake which is a july intake um so you know number one you'd be able to enter the country much sooner uh number two uh, you know if you do have a spouse and a child uh, they may not be eligible for a partner or dependent visa if you are on a skilled migrant category job search visa however if you are on a student visa and you are going for um, you know a masters level course then you will be able to get your um, you know your partner along as well your dependent child along as well so you don't have to be uh, you know apart from each other for a considerable amount of time so uh, that's another added factor that you should take into consideration and um, of course you know uh, if you do come if you do uh, decide to go by the study pathway you will have a new zealand qualification you'll have a local qualification from there so that's uh, you know definitely going to be useful for you when you are you know finding jobs later on in new zealand as opposed to you know coming into new zealand with of course you know not uh, not an internationally recognized qualification perhaps um, so yeah i would suggest you to go ahead and speak to unis and kind of understand the benefits of the student visa um, you know pathway a little more uh, because i do highly recommend that so um Uh, as for your question about IELTS general or academic for the residence application, you can give either of the two. All right. So our next question is Rachin Kumar. Um, Rachin has given his number and said looking for higher education. uh thanks a lot rachin for connecting with us and um, you know our team will definitely take note of your contact details and we will uh, get in touch with you at the earliest see surya has written thanks for the clarification you people are always professional thank you uh see surya thank you so much for that feedback um, you know this is our this is our responsibility to you guys um, you know as um, 
basically you are our clients so of course it's, it is our responsibility to give you the most professional advice and honest advice on top of that you know we don't um, we don't kind of mislead our clients in any way or we don't kind of push you towards a certain uh, you know pathway just for the sake of it um, you know our advice to you is always uh, going to be extremely honest and of course up to date as well so yes thank you for that feedback all right isaac has written um, that i have got an offer of place from university of auckland and university of canterbury for data science isaac all right you've shared your number um i heard studying in christchurch gives me 30 extra points for applying in pr however university of auckland comes into top 100 colleges in the world my main idea is to get pr and settle in new zealand shall i go with the ranking of the university or the pr points what are your insights on this uh hi isaac uh thanks for your question so um i think your question should itself um it itself provides the answer your main idea is to get pr right so um that's the main idea for most of our clients uh, to obtain residence ultimately so yes while university of auckland might be higher ranked uh, it really doesn't matter that much university of canterbury is a great university as well and you are right that um, you know finding employment outside of Auckland will get you 30 extra points. So uh, my suggestion would uh, to you would be to um, you know keep that into consideration. And University of Canterbury is a great um, university, so you should definitely consider that. But um, our team will get in touch with you and kind of you know guide you a little bit more around that as well. So yes, thanks thanks for posting and you know writing your query. All right, so there do not seem to be any more questions as of now. Um, so yeah, one of my team members did, uh, you know, uh, want me to uh, tell you a little bit about the skill migrant category, um, the points calculation process. Um, so what a lot of times what happens is, of course, you know, uh, some of you people who have done the research uh, would be aware that there is a points calculator available on the Immigration New Zealand website. So uh, while that may give you a rough idea about, you know, the points that you are um, eligible for, it may not be extremely accurate. So um, my advice to you would be to send in your CVs to us uh, if you do feel that you're meeting the points um, so that we can cross check that. And, um, you know, as trained licensed immigration advisors, we would be able to decipher a few of those things for you that the computer may not be able to do. So, um, you know, don't uh, kind of overestimate the potentials of a computer. Um, you know, uh, we still kind of do need the human mind involved in these processes. Uh, so I would encourage you to send your CV, uh, your CV as well as your spouse's CV to us so that we can, um, you know, do an assessment for you and come back to you with the accurate picture. And also, of course, then guide you further. All right, any more questions? Um, other than that, those of you who have lodged their partnership applications, um, you know, yes, it's taking a little bit of time, uh, but, uh, you know, we've been advised that it takes about four to six months for an approval of a partnership application. Um, I would like to inform you all that, um, you know, partnership applications can only be lodged by licensed immigration advisors. So that is one um, huge benefit of, uh, you know, working with us, because not only would we help you lodge your student visa applications, but we can also assist you in the partnership applications, which a lot of other education consultancies will not be able to do. So um, it would be beneficial to you as well that your partner's application and your own application is lodged you know, by the same companies in tandem so that uh, you know, there is no uh, back and forth or confusion in the timeframes, et cetera. So um, we have a great uh, team that you know, processes partnership applications. Um, we've uh, mostly got approvals for that. 
So uh, I would encourage you to, uh, you know, connect with us even for partnership applications or people who are already in New Zealand and want their partners to come along now. Um, you know, you guys can also connect with us and we would be happy to assist you for, uh, you know, the lodgement of your spouse's applications as well. There do not seem to be any questions on Facebook. Um, hopefully our website is working fine. Uh, sorry, our uh, web page is working fine. Team, is there anything else you would like me to talk about um, specifically? Okay, other than that, um, you know, just to tell you a little bit about um, our company and the benefits of working with AJV as a company is also the fact that we do have great onshore support services. So we do have a team, uh, you know, great onshore team, which is based, um, you know, uh, in New Zealand to support you once you've, uh, you know, made the transition of, you know, uh, coming over to New Zealand and to, you know, pursue your studies. So uh, they're there to kind of guide you with whatever issues that you may have. Um, and we do have an office which is located in Hamilton. So it's very, uh, very approachable. Uh, you can just walk in at any time and meet our, uh, you know, our licensed immigration advisors or, um, you know, uh, even our onshore uh, manager who is Anjana Vijadas, who a lot of you would have probably even connected with. Um, so, yes, uh, you know, uh, other while other agencies may kind of just cut the cord with you once you've gotten your student visa, um, you know, we don't believe in doing that. Uh, we do see the value of all our clients. Uh, we've, in fact, hired some of them into AJV as well. So, um, you know, we that that we do kind of maintain a constant connection with all of our clients. And that's the beauty of, uh, you know, working with HIV. OK, so. While I can't see any comments on Facebook, one of my team members has uh, pasted a comment from Mohammed Nabil saying, uh, I'm from Nepal. I just want to know about the query regarding the PR for New Zealand. Uh, hi, Nabil. Thank you for leaving your contact number. Uh, our team will definitely get in touch with you and you know talk to you in more detail. Uh, however, in order to answer your query, um, you know, if you were to kind of rewind on the session itself, I was explaining the difference between PR and residence. Um, you know, you only obtain permanent residence after you've been a resident for two years. Uh, so. Other than that, for residents, you do need to meet uh, about 160 points, uh, which is on the basis of different capacity building factors, um, such as your age, your uh, you know prior work experience, your qualifications, etc. And you also need to have an offer of employment from New Zealand, or you should have completed a you know course to your course that leads to a master's or doctorate. So these requirements are a little bit difficult to uh, obtain. So uh, what we do recommend is for clients to, you know, consider going for the study plus settle pathway instead, which could be uh, beneficial in many more ways than, uh, you know, actually applying for a residence application. So if you were to just rewind on the session uh, a bit, you would, you know, you can listen to me talking about the benefits of, a, of going for the study pathway as opposed to the residence pathway. And of course, we will connect with you, um, you know, on your phone as well and um, uh, guide you further around that. Hussain has written, I want MS in structure designing. Please give me information about duration and cost. Thank you. Hussain, can you please um, can you please leave your contact details as well so that we can connect with you? Um, our team will get in touch with you then and then provide you with all this information that you require. But of course, we will need your contact details for that first. Uh, Fawad has also written in pharmaceutical sciences with five years experience in pharmaceutical marketing, age 31, IL 6.5 requirements for PR, question mark. 
uh, Fawad, once again, we will be needing your contact details uh, so that, you know, we can um, guide you properly. Um, I guess you're interested in residence, uh, but for that, you know, these these few details will not be enough for me to do a points calculation for you. We will be needing your uh, CV as well as your wife's CV if you are married. And, um, you know, you can send that to us at info at ajvglobal.com. That's the email ID for all those of you who are interested in, you know, having your CVs assessed. You could just uh, send your resumes to us there. All right. Uh, Hussain has written, I've left my numbers about four times, but you didn't give me any message. Um, all right, team, can you please take note of that? And Hussain, we apologize if, uh, you know, our team has not contacted you in spite of you having left your number. However, we will make sure that we do get in touch with you, um, you know, as soon as, in fact, my live session is over. It will happen today, so don't worry. We'll have one of our study advisors connect with you, and they will provide you with all the details, um, you know, regarding the courses that you're interested in. So, uh, yeah, thanks for connecting with us. All right. So um, we have another question from Omar Issa. Hello. Uh, OK, and they've left. Uh, he has left his number as well. I want to apply for PhD, but have funds in bank for only one year. What kind of financial proof does immigration require for years two and three? Uh, hi, Omar. Thank you for your question. Thanks for connecting with us and also sharing your number. We would definitely like to assist you with your application for PhD. Um, so uh, I can briefly tell you about it. However, you know, we'd want to give you more details about it, uh, you know, over call. Uh, but yes, um, for the first year, you know, Immigration New Zealand does require you to show uh, liquid funds which should be, you know, readily withdrawable in order to make fees payments. But for the second and third year, you can you can show a payment plan to Immigration New Zealand as well. So it doesn't really, those funds don't really need to, uh, you know, be six months old or be, uh, you know, readily available for you to withdraw. It just needs to be a projected payment plan. So that's just answering your question in brief. However, we, you know, you've shared your number, so our team will definitely get in touch with you and, um, you know, we'll provide you with more information on that. Okay, Isaac has another question. Thank you for your previous response. I have one more question. What if I study in Christchurch for two years and get a job in other uh, states? How will be the how will the points cal how will be okay how will the points be calculated for the PR process? Um, Isaac, thanks for your question. Um, basically, uh, that's fine if you you know if you um, study in Christchurch and then you find employment somewhere else. You will get those uh, 30 extra points as long as the employment is outside of Auckland. So as long as it's not in Auckland, um, you know, you would be able to get those 30 extra points. I hope that answers your question. All right, let me just see if there's anything on Facebook. There don't seem to be any more questions. Um, All right. Um, I will also share the contact details for you, those of you who aren't aware. Um, so uh, in India, our toll free number is one eight double zero one zero three six five two five. So please feel free to call on that number. And, uh, you know, one of our study counselors will directly pick up that call and you can kind of just start your process automatically from there. And for those of you who are in New Zealand, the toll free number is zero double eight zero six nine six nine double seven. You can also email us on info at ajvglobal.com. So, uh, yes, those are our contact details. Just uh, please do get in touch with us. Um, all right. So we do, okay, Hossein has um, given a follow-up question, which I'm not able to see for some reason, but um, it says, can you please tell me about MSN structure designing? Um, 
all right so one of our counselors has ruben in fact has just responded saying that you could potentially take up a course in design and specialize in structures um Hussain, in order to you know get uh, more information on this, we will connect you to a study counselor. They're very well versed with the you know different course courses available for you know across uh, a lot of different fields. So don't worry about that. They'll get in touch with you. I've also been advised that there is a course um, at Otago in design specialty. So you could perhaps look at that as well. So um, you know we will provide you with more guidance around this. Not to worry. All right. I was also advised by another team member to uh, let you all know those of you who are, um, you know, who are bringing their partner, who are going for a master's course in New Zealand, and who are bringing their partners along as well. It's uh, more advisable to apply for a work visa for the partner. Um, it just has added be benefits. Would um, you know, Immigration New Zealand seems to be processing these applications in a timely manner, and um, you know, it'll also give the partner work rights. So that's also an added benefit. So just kind of keep that in mind as well. All right, so there don't seem to be any more questions now. So I guess I'm going to wrap up the live session and um, I will just end it by encouraging those of you who have not already gotten in touch with us to, um, you know, just go ahead and drop us a message or give us a call. Uh, we're available at all times uh, of the day. Practically, uh, my team is very dedicated, very committed. We work round the clock, in fact. Um, so, you know, just uh, feel free to drop a message whenever and we will get back to you when we can. Um, so yeah, the you know the uh, once again the July intake is the next big intake that's going to be uh, coming soon. So if you want if you want to aim for that, then it's best to you know start the process with us now because we will be lodging those applications uh, March onwards. So yes, do get in touch with us. And um, for all of those those of you who watched the live session, thanks a lot for attending. And um, I will be seeing you again next week. Goodbye.